Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are at the start of our journey asking the most important question first, which is, what is the GitHub Foundations certification? Well, it is an entry-level GitHub certification teaching you Git version control basics, working with GitHub repos, collaboration features, modern development, project management, uh, GitHub privacy, security administration, GitHub community, and open source. Now, I put in Git version control basics, but uh, they don't really require it in the uh, certification itself, but you will implicitly learn them as you work through uh, this course. The unofficial course code uh, for the certification is GHF because there are no course codes uh, that GitHub has published. So I've used the um, small initial initializations that they use on their um, certification page. GitHub is the leading uh, uh, version control service in the world. It's one of the most common ways for developers to showcase their code. Uh, if you go for uh, developer interviews, a lot of times people want to have your GitHub link so they can see your activity um, and your code. So who's the certification for? Well, consider this certification if you are new to cloud programming and need to learn version control fundamentals, um, more like version control workflows online, I, I would be better to say. Uh, you're a non-developer uh, at tech role. So you are in tech, but you're just a non-developer looking to quickly add developer skills. Uh, you want to be effective uh, collaborating on code bases with other developers. This GitHub certification will not test your Git skills. It's focused on GitHub. You will use Git, but you may have serious gaps in Git knowledge um, to be used in a uh, work or production environment. So make sure you polyfill that information where you can. Um, in terms of the roadmap, they have four certifications, the foundation, the advanced security, the actions, the admin. And this is where I would put them in terms of difficulty. They don't um, categorize them into levels, but uh, in level 100, I would say the foundations is, is very easy. Um, the advanced security, I put it at 150 because it looks like an extension of the foundations focusing on the security features. Actions is very technical, so a level 200 makes sense. And admin is, I wouldn't say hard, but it goes into enterprise, so it's harder to get access to the enterprise account and test it out, and you have to understand enterprise concepts. So I put it at the level 300. Uh, there's a lot of different routes you could take. You could go from the level 100, uh, to, or sorry, the GitHub Foundations to Advanced Security to the admin or the foundations to the actions. To me, the Advanced Security seems like such little effort to do that it seems like a, a good follow-up or something you should do at the same time uh, if the content's available to um, a study when doing GitHub, GitHub Foundations. Uh, if you're looking for particular roles, you could probably say the Cloud Security Engineer is where you'd go for the Advanced Security. So you'd start with the Foundations for all of them, go there. If you want to be a Cloud Developer, uh, GitHub Actions is super useful because it's a CI CD pipeline and it's becoming one of the most popular CI CD pipelines out there. If you're an Enterprise Engineer, then the Administrator is good for having that Enterprise knowledge if somebody wants to run GitHub uh, there. But you know, these are just titles. You're not going to actually have that role from completing these certifications. It's just part of uh, content for those particular roles. Um, GitHub certifications do not validate programming, technical diagramming, code management, other technical skills that are required for obtaining technical roles. So just understand the limitations of these certifications. They are useful for learning, but understand that uh, it, it stops at a certain place, okay? How long should you take to uh, pass? Well, if you're a beginner uh, and you've never used GitHub before and you've never used Git or written code before and you're new to, to cloud and tech, maybe 20 hours. Um, there is no uh, historical information about this certification because it's brand new. And I'm the first one with a study course out. So we'll say 20 hours is a sufficient amount of time uh, for experienced folks. Um, if you have practical knowledge working with GitHub, if you have technical knowledge working with Git, uh, you have strong background in technology, you've worked in a technical developer role, it's gonna be four hours. If you're, an, if you're in a technical role, but just not a developer, you might be more in the middle. Um, and so I would probably say 14 hours of average study time, 50% lecture, 50% labs, uh, at, or sorry, 50% lecture and labs, and then 50% practice exams. That's usually always the same thing I always say. And one to two hours a day for 14 days. If it's 14 hours, you could do a, an hour a day and you'll be in really, really good shape. What does it take to pass the exam? Watch the video lecture and memorize key information. This exam in particular is very factoidal and unfairly so. So make sure where I call out factoidal information to memorize it because it is silly and you'll lose points uh, for that. Do the hands-on labs. It's gonna really help cement how all this stuff works together. And even though the exams don't really require it, I, I want you to have that knowledge and I want you to have an easier time passing. So please do the uh, follow-alongs. Uh, follow do 
paid online practice exams because this one in particular, again, it's very factoidal and you need to see some variations so you don't get caught off guard. If you think that you go through my course and go, I'm really good at GitHub now, uh, you'll be throwing a, a bunch of like enterprise questions and stuff that you didn't think that would be there. And in particular, what information is there. So make sure you utilize practice exams. Make sure you utilize my free practice exam, which will come out with this. Um, and you'll do fine. Again, not a hard exam, but you know, I don't want you to be frustrated on that exam, losing out some particular points because you didn't know that you had to know the, uh, uh, the lineup of GitHub work, uh, workflow uh, actions inside of uh, GitHub projects or something like that. There are seven domains for the certification. And I need to point out that for some reason, GitHub uh, does not share the weighting of each domain. Most exams do that. And my experience when I sat the exam, it was kind of in balance where I had a lot of enterprise questions. So um, just understand that you might not even see a question in the domain that you are expecting, or you might have very few, a lot in other areas. I don't know why they did this. It was a bad choice, but that's what they did. We have seven domains. We have support uh, GitHub Enterprise for users and key stakeholders. Uh, domain two, manage user identities and GitHub authentication. D uh, domain three, describe how GitHub is deployed, distributed, and licensed. Domain four, manage access and permissions based on membership. Domain five, ensure, or sorry, enable secure software development and ensure compliance. Domain six, manage GitHub actions. Domain seven, benefit of benefits of the GitHub community. There's no development stuff in here, but I've crammed in the exam development stuff because you really should know development stuff and GitHub is a developer platform. For some reason, they decided not to include it in here, but I feel that it really makes it easier to utilize GitHub if you know the developer tools. Uh, where do you take this exam? Well, at an in-person test center or online from the convenience of your own home. GitHub delivers it with PSI. Um, so PSI has an online version and then they have a, a bunch of test networks that they're partnered with. Um, it is a it, it is a proctored exam. So there's somebody that's uh, supposedly watching your exam so that you do not cheat. I just wanna warn you, PSI is not known for having a good test experience. When I saw it my exam, um, uh, I was 30 minutes early checked in and uh, I waited 40 minutes after my check-in time because it said it was connecting me to a specialist. specialist. It never did. I had to contact support. They, uh, they made me uh, fill in a bunch of information which seemed weird because they should know who I am already because I'm in their app. And then they told me, oh, I'm not actually connected to anybody. And so the app lies to you. So don't get stressed out if you have technical issues with PSI. It's extremely common. And uh, if you're doing it online, if you can do it in a test center, I strongly recommend doing so because it just makes the whole experience a lot less stressful from the environment perspective, from uh, the technology perspective. But if you got to do online, just uh, don't stress out and understand that everybody has these issues. It uh, doesn't make sense, but everyone has these issues and not to, not to sweat it or throw you off before your exam starts. In terms of grading, they don't give us a grade. GitHub does not provide a passing score. We don't know how many points there are. We do know how many questions there are, but uh, for some reason they've decided not to provide that information. Uh, they say in their FAQ because they can't exactly calculate it. They don't wanna give you an inaccurate number. It really makes no sense, but I'm gonna tell you that you still will pass, pass this exam. It's not that hard. But yeah, you just have to make sure that you can get as many points on those factual questions and don't stress out about not knowing what your passing score is. There are 75 questions in this exam, 60 scored, 15 unscored. So you can afford to get 15 questions wrong at least. There is no penalty for wrong questions, at least as far as I'm aware of. And I saw uh, both multiple choice and multiple answer. Uh, sometimes it was choose two, choose three. It was never more than three. There wasn't that many multiple answer uh, like basically multiple select ones, so it wasn't that bad. Don't stress out about the unscored questions because there's 15 of them. They don't count towards your exam. Why is there unscored questions? Uh, they're used to evaluate the introduction of new questions, to determine if the exam is too easy, and the passing score or question difficulty needs to be increased to discover users who are attempting to cheat the exam or still dump exam questions. If you encounter questions you've never studied for that seem really hard, keep your cool and remember, they may be unscored questions. The duration of this exam is two hours, so you get 1.6 minutes per question. So that exam time in minutes is 120 minutes. Your seat time is uh, 30 minutes, or sorry, 150 minutes, because you add 30 minutes there. When I say seat time, that's the time you need to go in and check in and re-review the instructions and get your workspace set up and sign the NDA and show them your space. 
um, provide feedback at an exam. Uh, I was able to check in 30 minutes online prior. You, you probably want to be 45 minutes prior to your exam, okay? So give yourself a few minutes to get set up and try to check in early. Sometimes they let you start exams early, right? So even if you're scheduled for five, uh, sometimes five minutes after your check-in, you can start and get rolling on it. But uh, yeah, there you go. And we'll see you in the next one. Ciao.